Welcome to a brand new series of Pets Practice. Dr. Kevin returns to help pet owners understand common and some less common issues with our pets and how we can best look after them. Lisa Williams joins the team and gets out and about discovering how we interact with our pets. She meets many pet mad people and gets to try out some of the activities we share with our animals. Julia Kinghorn, our expert dog trainer with her Border Collie Flick will each week teach us all a trick we can train our dogs to demonstrate their hidden talents. And Nigel from Nigel's Animal Rescue takes us along with him as he travels around rescuing all creatures great and small. Welcome everyone to Pets Practice. In this week's show, Julia and Flick demonstrate the sit and beg trick. Nigel carries out one of his most common rescues. Lisa visits a retirement home for some very famous racehorses and also gets to see close up how horse tissue therapy works. While Dr. Kevin investigates why Dino is limping after a fall. My name's Julia Kinghorn and this is my Border Collie Flick. How do you do? Good girl. Dog training is both a fun and rewarding experience that's essential for any dog owner. Not only will it bring you closer together, it will also help your pet become a beautiful, well-mannered and happy animal that's a pleasure to be around. I've been training dogs for the last 11 years, helping hundreds of dog owners train their dogs from puppy class right through to advanced level of obedience. I've worked with problem dogs and performance dogs, but it's training tricks that I love the best. Hey Flick, give me five. Good one. So over the coming weeks, I'm going to show you some tried and true methods to help teach your dog some new skills and help you get the most out of your training sessions. Before getting started, you'll need two things. First are a lot of rewards. A reward can be whatever your dog fancies, such as perhaps a belly rub, playing good old fetch, maybe a game of tug with its favourite toy. But most common is small pieces of food that can be gulped down quickly. Here I've got some cheese, frankfurt and just some dry food. And although it's difficult, make sure your dog works for your rewards. Yes, some dogs are harder to get revved up for training than others, but giving them freebies is counterproductive. The second thing you'll need is a marker, which is a short and precise sound or word, like yes, that marks the exact moment you reward. When training a new skill, I like to use the clicker. This is a button clicker and this is a box clicker. Many dogs know the sound of their dinner bowl being picked up or maybe even their lead and they come running. That's because these sounds are associated with the good things. So before we teach the dog any new skill, we condition the clicker in a similar manner. We click and give the food. We usually give that food within half to one second of doing the click. Using a marker in training is a very effective way to communicate to your dog. With a simple click, you can tell your dog immediately when they're doing the exact behaviour that you like. Good girl. Animal Rescue Nigel speaking. Animal Rescue Nigel speaking. Animal Rescue Nigel speaking. I've just received a call about a possum that's got himself caught inside of a fireplace. Now this would have to be the most common rescue that I've dealt with in the last 30 years now. Possums have evolved and adapted to living inside of our homes very close to us, down inside the wall cavity. But in this case, this roof is sealed. He's been unable to get inside. So therefore he's climbed up the chimney, found the top of the pot and he's gone down inside the flue. So he's actually inside the firebox in the chimney. They also go down the gas fires as well as your range hood flues. So we're going to go inside, see if the owner's at home there and go and rescue this fella. G'day, Nigel from Animal Rescue. I believe you've got a possum down your chimney. Yes, I do. Come in. Oh, thank you. 
This is one of the most common heaters that we deal with. Let's have a look. Oh, we're in trouble here. This guy's actually got his head poking down at me. He's not a happy chappy. So what we're going to have to do for this particular one, because if I reach in to grab him like I normally do, he's actually going to bite me. So we're going to get a rope. We're going to drop a rope down the chimney just to push him down inside of the firebox here. And then it's going to be nice and easy to get him out. We'll have you out in a moment, matey. Dino has been brought in to Vets on Parker after a nasty fall. Dino's been rushed to see me this morning because he's got a very sore front left leg. He actually fell down some stairs early this morning. Dino, 12 months ago, had a similar sort of accident and actually fractured his left elbow. Today, we're actually going to need to x-ray his front left leg to see exactly what's going on. Hopefully, the screw that was placed into his elbow last year is still in place and we don't have anything more serious going on. Good boy, we'll just position his front left leg. There we go. And we'll take this x-ray now. Perfect. Oh, sorry matey, just come back. Good boy. There we go. And excellent. This is Dino's x-ray of his front left leg. And the first thing that we can see is the very large screw and pin that are placed up near his elbow. And this is due to the surgery that was uh, performed last Easter after he fractured his elbow. Very nasty incident. Uh, he has come out of that and is incredibly was doing incredibly well on that front left leg until this morning where if we visualize further down his foot, uh, we can see two lines in the midsection here, which is about halfway down his forearm. And this is an oblique fracture of both his radius and his ulna. A very, very nasty sort of incident and total loss of stability in his front left leg now. This is gonna to need to be surgically repaired for gold standard treatment. And the way we do that is actually with an orthopedic plate that's gonna be placed directly over the radius. We shouldn't need to worry about the ulna, the ulna being the smaller bone on the outside it doesn't provide a huge amount of support to the front left leg. The radius is by far the most important bone in that leg and that's the one we're going to concentrate on fixing. So what we need to do now is I unfortunately need to give Dino's owners a call. I can't imagine how devastated they're going to be with this sort of news but I also know from treating very similar patients uh, with similar injuries the success of this procedure is generally very high. Uh, it's not as complicated as the surgery that we had to perform on his front left elbow and we should see him running around being his normal naughty Dino self uh, hopefully in about a month's time. So I'll give Dino's owners a call now.